Well, this is dog me driven medicine across our field that has to be changed into uh, evidence based medicine. And so it's just a, it's a mind change and it's also going away from the culture of publish or perish. Thank you for joining me, professors. Why are we having this debate about the guidelines? What exactly needs debating? Well, I think it, it, it all comes down to not really the question of whether or not we should have guidelines. It's a question of you know, which format and whether or not we actually want to implement the classical way of looking at it or we want to have really high standards for how we um, you know, write and implement guidelines. It all comes down to whether or not we want to um, give, up to, give in to the pressure and write guidelines just for the sake of it, for the publication, or do we really want to change our practice? Dr. Afshari, what are the negatives in the current situation as you see it? That the negative aspect is that if the guidelines do not live up to the standards that, that should be the best standards, we may, they may actually be misleading. Um, so we may actually not only uh, endanger our patients, but we will also misguide our, our colleagues. Most of it comes down to the fact that we have a lot of literature that is of poor quality. We have many traditions not based on evidence-based medicine. This is dogma-driven medicine across our field that has to be changed into uh, evidence-based medicine. And so it's just a, it's a mind change and it's also going away from the culture of publish or perish, the fact that you know, many institutions and academic institutions are driven by publication of you know, academic papers without setting the standards high. One of our major issues has been how do we control the, uh, the impact of uh, conflict of interest. One of the challenges we have that some of the experts may actually be perceived of having too much conflict of interest. So this is another aspect that we need to control. Professor De Robertis, you're in the pros corner. Yep. So how do you respond to Dr. Ashari's position? We have roughly one million citations every year produced. This means that the, the literature is increasing with, with very fast speed and for clinicians it's very, very difficult to, to, to understand what is happening. And so it, it, it's, it's a, a daily struggle. I mean, what, 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 what I have to do? I mean, which, which uh, procedure I have to change? Which, which drugs I have to, to use? And we need evidence-based medicine and, and the guidelines is a way to offer, if they are well developed, evidence-based medicine. Probably most of the guidelines lack authority and lack also a decision process. And that's why probably uh, also good guidelines that already exist are not followed. Where there is not such strong evidence, we, then we also have to give some uh, clinical reasoning tool to the clinicians. They, they should understand why we suggest to use that procedure, we suggest to use that drug. The problem is the how the guidelines are developed, I think, and how the recommendations are given. Because if the recommendation is based on a very, very high level evidence, and if the, so if the benefit for the patients is very high, then that recommendation should be followed blindly, I would say, but we have few guidelines like that, few recommendations like that, because the literature is most of the time is not so strict and so clear in response. And because of that then we have conflicting guidelines yeah. and conflicting recommendations and then which one is actually uh, you know the highest standard. Can you foresee ways um, that the production and implementation of ESA guidelines will change in future as a result of this debate? There's a lot of focus on the implementation but we all, I, mean, I see my ambition is actually higher than that, that goes beyond that because guidelines can actually point out areas of research that we need to focus on. So it's, just, just not, it's not just a matter of writing documents, it's also how to use these documents to change our practices and our research because that's the essential pillar for our you know, existence. We're talking about 500 billion US dollars a year annually basically being wasted because of you know, erroneous research. So it's, it's a huge problem that we need to address. And that is my you know, reservations about producing, mass producing guidelines. Um, I don't believe in mass production, I believe in higher quality. Less is more in a sense that I want higher standards for our guidelines uh, and less guidelines or small and more focused guidelines. Fascinating. Professor De Robertis, Dr. Afshari, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, it was a pleasure being here. Euroanesthesia TV is brought to you from Euroanesthesia 2019, the European Anesthesiology Congress. 
For more videos from the Congress, make sure to click these links and subscribe for much more from the world of medicine.